Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my YouTube channel and in today's video I will be explaining Arsene Wenger's 2003-2004 Invincible side. September the 22nd 1996 was the day that Arsenal Football Club would change forever. For the better, Arsene Wenger in what was a shock appointment turned out to be a match made in heaven despite a few players having slight concerns at the start. Wenger brought change, the way Arsenal ate, trained and navigated in the transfer world all changed and so did the style of football. In the 2001-2002 season, Wenger's side went a beating just in the away matches and in the press, Arsene Wenger conceded that he thought it was possible not to lose home or away in a season, to which only he could have possibly believed. In 2003-2004 though, dreams turned into reality and Arsenal completed the invincible season, the first time since Preston North End in the 1888-89 season. So now let's dive in how the Le Professeur and Arsenal managed this. Arsene Wenger lined up his team in his then favoured 4-4-2, which was also arguably the formation of English football. But he made it his own and this 4-4-2 shape was rarely seen as Arsenal transitioned on the pitch. As the image would suggest, there was plenty of movement and players operating in space which made this 4-4-2 formation actually look a lot more like a 4-2-3-1. Lehman was an aggressive keeper, a sweeper. In possession, he would often distribute the ball quickly to start off an attack. The two wingbacks had duties of stretch and play and making forward runs, Ashley Cole more so than Loren, whilst Loren played with a little more caution. Toure was seen as a ball playing defender, someone who can bring the ball out as well as find a pass whilst Sir Campbell was more of the traditional central defender. The whole back line was quick, they had pace and this allowed Arsenal's defence line to be higher. In midfield, Vieira and Gilberto Silva would operate in central midfield but with two very different roles. Gilberto was seen deeper in front of defence whilst Vieira positioned himself slightly higher. For build-up purposes, these two players wouldn't operate on the same line given the one on the ball, typically Gilberto Silva, a better passing angle to play the ball forward. Both Perez and Lundberg on the flanks like to get forward but Perez would often cut inside and play not too distant from Thierry Henry, this also allowed Ashley Cole to be more adventurous. Lundberg was more of a winger, someone who could dribble at defenders pinning them backwards. And finally, up top, there was a lot of magic in Dennis Bergkamp and Thierry Henry. Bergkamp was the creator, dropping deep in between the lines, also offering himself as an option to then switch the ball out wide, and Henry liked to stay further ahead while slightly positioning himself to the left. This also helped link up play with Perez on the counter-attack. Many viewed this Arsenal side as a counter-attacking team as they displayed quick attacking transitions. From defensive situations, Arsenal could create or score within just a few passes. Down to the players' staggered positioning, they were able to break down sides and players operated in lines and spaces difficult for the opponents to defend. Bear in mind, most teams at this time did play with a 4-4-2 also. When building from the back, Colo Torre was very comfortable on the ball and therefore he could play either an advanced vertical pass or bring the ball out in search of a better passing angle. Gilberto Silva was also relied upon to make quick vertical passes to get the ball forward to the creative players, the wingers, strikers or Patrick Vieira. Many times when Arsenal were building up, they could outnumber the opponents in midfield. With Burkant coming deeper, meant Arsenal could now have three instead of two in midfield and this could create a three versus two situation. Or, if Perez was also in central areas, this means that this could even be a 4 vs 2 situation. Going forward, Arsenal were effective attacking centrally, with Vieira making runs forward supporting the attackers, Dennis Bergkamp dropping deeper, but Arsenal were just as dangerous on the flanks, especially on the left. Robert Perez and Henri played close to each other, Henri liked to drift out to the left whilst Perez liked to come inside and this meant Ashley Cole could afford to get up the flank with some freedom. When Ashley Cole did get further forward, this helps create an overload with either Henri or Perez to make a 2v1 situation on the left against the opposition's fullback and then either Henri or Perez could then move into the channels between the fullback and the central defender. Freddie Lundberg was an effective dribbler. When he had his chance, he could get past his defender in a 1v1 battle, so Loren didn't do many overlapping but when he did have the chance, he would do so and this meant that Lundberg would also get some support on the right hand side. 
When the ball was with the opponent's back line, the two forwards, Omri and Dennis Bergkamp would engage in a press to try and force the play out wide. If the ball made its way centrally, then Bergkamp would drop off to add another body in midfield but Omri would remain forward. With the back line being quick, quicker than most forwards, they could set up and play an offside trap. With the midfield not engaging too high up and the back line stepping up, this meant that Arsenal were compact and had a mid block that was very difficult to play through as opponents couldn't have space or time in midfield. And if the ball did make its way over or past the defence line, then Arsenal had Jens Lehmann, the sweeper keeper, to sweep things up. Gilberto Silva then had the job to protect the defence and sat in front whilst Vieira could win the ball and set up a counter-attack where he would have forward runs to pass to or he could be the one getting forward to support the attack. The two wingers had their defensive responsibilities whilst getting forward once the ball has been won again to aid their counter-attack. Though we mainly touched on the players who mostly started, this was far down to just those individuals, as someone like Dennis Bergkamp never had the physical profile to consistently complete 90 minutes. The Invincibles were and still are considered to be one of the best Premier League teams ever and it's hard to argue that. Arsene Wenger left his mark on Arsenal and the English game and he is a manager that we will be speaking about decades and centuries later. But that wraps up my analyst on the Invincibles. I hope you enjoyed it but we are now going to look at the Football Manager 2021 tactic that I have created and of course is Arsene Wenger's replication. I hope you enjoy that tactic now, let's get into it. So welcome back, here is Arsene Wenger's 4-4-2 Football Manager 2021 tactic from the Invincible season. There is actually two versions, one is a recreation and one is a Football Manager 2021 tactic. So one is more true, more of a replication whilst the other is more suited to Football Manager 2021 so it will include things like set pieces. But for the recreation, in goal we have the sweeper keeper on the support duty, that would be Jens Lehmann. The two wingbacks, we have one wingback and we have one fullback now. The Ashley Cole, the wingback, he will look to get further forward, he would run wide with the ball, he will cross from the byline, he will cross into the centre of the box and he would mark a specific position. That specific position would be the attacking midfielder on the right hand side. For the fullback on support, which would be Lau Ren, he would also cross into the centre and he would also man mark, but he would man mark the left attacking midfielder. In central defence, we have a central defender, which would be the Sol Campbell role, and he would be a more traditional defender, whilst he is partnered with Colo Torre, the ball playing defender, someone that could bring the ball out, so I added dribble more. He would also take more risk trying to play some vertical passes. In midfield for our double pivot, we have a defensive midfielder on the defend duty. This will be Gilberto Silva holding his position in front of the defence. Now he will close down more and tackle hard. Off the ball, he will kind of be like a ball winning midfielder, winning the ball for our side so we can go on a counter attack. For Patrick Vieira, I believe he's more of a box to box midfielder, but we are playing a defensive midfielder, not a central midfielder. And Segundo Volante is the closest to a box to box midfielder. His instruction is to get further forward when we are in possession. He will move into channels and he will close down more and tackle harder, similar to why Gilberto Silva would do it. He will try to win the ball back and set us up for our counter attack. On the flanks, on the right hand side, we have the Freddy Lundberg role. The winger on support, he will cross from the byline, cross into the centre and mark tighter. Also, he will dribble more, he would run wide with the ball more, cross more often and stay wider stretching the pitch. The left side, we have the wide playmaker but we also have the inverted winger on the attack duty. Similar, they are going to operate in this kind of area here but it depends which you prefer. I prefer a playmaker, so I went with a playmaker on the attack duty, but depending who was playing in that role, I know it sounds a little complicated, but if it was a playmaker like Ozil, then I would play a wide playmaker. If it was an inverted winger, someone like Reese Nelson maybe, then of course I would go for the inverted winger. They both gave me similar results, so there's not one that's better than the other. Maybe the inverted winger could get you more goals. Up top we have the false nine which would be the Dennis Bergkamp role and the reason why I went with the false nine is because he actually will operate in the attacking midfield and playmaker role. It says it in the description so why not but he will generally look to drop deeper in midfield and help out in midfield. He will shoot less often, he will dribble more which I don't believe Burkham really dribbled more, not really taking on defenders in a 1v1 situation but he will be taking more risks. And lastly up front for the advanced forward Thierry Henry 
I've given him the advance forward, but his instruction is to stay wider, trying to replicate that movement of him staying kind of wide on the left hand side for the Arsenal. Now, for the team instructions, for the mentality, we have gone with the positive mentality. The attacking width is unfairly wide, so 50%. For the approach play, we are going to pass into space. I believe that helps with the counter-attack. Rather than passing it to the player's feet, you're passing it into their path as they're running forward. For the approach play, for the focus play, we are focusing through the middle and we are going to play out of defence. If we are focusing through the middle, obviously we can overload. But when you are focusing through the middle, sometimes your wider players may be inclined to come into central areas also for the passing directness we have gone with a shorter passing but we have gone with a higher tempo in transition when arsenal are transitioning when the possession has been lost we have no instructions but when you are playing against the bigger sides liverpool manchester city chelsea united then you can go for the regroup and when possession has been lost we will go for our counter movements when the goalkeeper is in possession he will distribute it to the center backs mainly looking for colo torre and he will distribute it quickly trying to get our attacks off quicker for our defensive shape we have gone for the standard line of engagement and the defense line is on higher for the marking and tackling we are using tighter marking for the pressing intensity we are using more urgent and for the tackling we will be getting stuck in so that there is the team and player instructions for the recreation but now we can look at the fm21 tactic which is similar but you can see for the line of engagement we have set that to higher and for the some player individual roles you can see we've added close down more tackle harder and mark tighter that's on the right back that's on the left back and it's also on the wider players i believe the striker the false nine also has tackle harder and the advanced forward does not have stay wider he just has well he has nothing <laughs> But now we are going to look at some of the results. You can see that Arsenal finished second in the Premier League. We didn't do the unbeaten. We actually lost eight games. We drew five, but we won 25. In real life, I believe we won 26. So we're not too far off the match ones, but we did lose way too many games. We did get 80 points, eight points away from the eventual champions. In the Europa League, we did win that. We won 2-0. So both tests, we actually won in the Europa League. We will also look at the test results quickly for the other tactic. But for this one, we got knocked out in the FA Cup semi-finals by Manchester United, knocked out in the Carabao quarterfinals by Manchester United, but we did beat Liverpool in the Charity Shield. For our team report, you can see we were aggressive and we were clinical. And for our defensive record, you can see that we were we were quiet and impenetrable. For our average possession, we finished 8th. So we had 50% of the average possession. But we did score most of the goals in the league. We scored 94 goals and we had the second most expected goals for. Defensively, we had the fourth best defense in the league, conceding 39 goals. So that's just about over a goal a game, literally just over. For the top goal scorers, Obama Yang scored 21 goals in 29 games. He was the top goal scorer, the Thierry Henry of the squad. He scored 41 goals in all competitions in 51 games. He also was the highest average rated player, but the most assist was Reese Nelson. He was who was acting like an inverted winger, whilst Bakaro Saka was the right winger, surprisingly, even though he is left-footed. But throughout the squad, Aubameyang scored 41 goals, Lacazette scored 26, Nicolas Pepe scored 18, Inketia scored 15, and Rob Holden scored 9, surprisingly. For the assists, Saka had the most assists alongside Reese Nelson, we already discovered that, but Kieran Tierney had 13 assists, and Lacazette, who was playing as the false nine, managed to get 12, whilst William got 11. We are now quickly going to transfer and check out the results for the FM21 tactic rather than the recreation. So here we are, you can see Arsenal won the league, playing 38, winning 31, drawing 3 and losing 4, so there's a big difference. We scored 98 goals, so we only scored 4 more than the previous test and we only concede 22 so we conceded less also we had 96 points incredible the team second had 95 one impressive thing about this one was the striker role again Aubameyang bear in mind he only played 19 goals bear in mind he only played 19 games in the league he scored 27 goals he got a terrible injury if we check he broke his foot three months out of the game he's he played 19 games in the league and scored 27 goals in all competitions he scored 30 in only 28 games Nicolas Pepe then took his job and he was fantastic up front scoring 22 goals and getting seven assists Lacazette scoring 18 goals and getting 11 assists the assist was fairly similar Kirantini getting 14 but Reese Nelson with the most with 19 
In the competitions, we also won the Europa League, but we did come runners-up in the Carabao Cup and runners-up in the Community Shield, getting knocked out in the fourth round of the FA Cup by Blackburn Rovers. But that, my friends, is the end of this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed this tactical analysis of the Arsenal's unbeaten team. My name is RDF. It has been a pleasure. If you're enjoying this content, make sure you are subscribed. Make sure you like this video. Make sure you leave a comment. It's been a pleasure. I will see you soon. Stay safe. Peace out.